guys, we have uh, plenty of stuff to talk about today, including the major flash flooding threat that is likely to be seen across southern Wisconsin and some of the surrounding areas. We'll also be dealing with another heat wave in the next few days, and even the possibility that Atlantic is also starting to wake up, and really, as we're heading close to the peak of the hurricane season, and we do have a disturbance, in fact, which we will also go over, as well as the concerning flooding that we will most likely see, at least according to the latest outlook. If we really start jumping into things here, um, but across the Great Lakes region and the Midwest, we do see some rain and storms developing. Also, with that um, being said, the pop-up storms have been a common feature seen across much of the South and Eastern United States as we take a look at various radars across the area. And it's even extending into New England, as we can see here. Even some storms in southern Canada. A couple flash flood warnings here and there. Um, we'll also see some of this with the southwestern monsoon, of course, with that really kicking the gear. It's mostly dry across Texas otherwise, but we do have some pop-up storms by the Gulf Coast as well. So I don't want to forget that. So we're seeing storms across much of the U.S., um, but also some rain um, even across the Midwest and the Great Lakes regions. That also extends into the Upper Midwest and the Northern Plains. So really there's nothing else other than that. So that's with the radar update. Now let's get in head and head over the excessive rainfall, aka flash flooding outlook for the next couple of days. We do see that we do have a moderate risk for flash flooding that is now across northeastern Iowa, southeast corner of Minnesota, southern Wisconsin, and northern Illinois. And the surrounding risk for slight risk um, that also includes those basically the same regions also extending into central Wisconsin, um, southwest and northern Michigan, northern Indiana, and the northwest corner of Ohio. Also with the monsoon, we do see the slight risk for Arizona and northern New Mexico and Colorado. And then heading into tomorrow's outlooks, we do see some more slight risks. One of them is across Colorado, New Mexico border area. Also, this is with the monsoon once again. We do have another slight risk that is also across northern New England. This one includes New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine. Um, the southwest monsoon also has uh, another slight risk for flash flooding. Um, this monsoon season is really um, in gear at this point. This one includes southwest Utah, southern Nevada, southeast California, and western Arizona. And, there's, and even with the experimental day for day fire looks, we do have another one for um, Wednesday for portions of eastern Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, and West Virginia. Not really on Thursday, at least as of yet. But taking a little um, glander at the discussion here. Um, they did actually make some adjustments, um, at least to the latest outlook here. Um, they did some little expansion moderate risks further to the south, including portions of Chicago Metro area and some other adjustments. But let's take a look at what we have here. Um, so the main focus is tonight. Um, so there's definitely that concern of back building and training of storms. There could be um, a pretty significant scenario should we see some of this training occurring, especially across northeast Iowa, southern Minnesota, and southern Wisconsin. Um, so while they haven't issued the high risk, um, if any of you guys, if you weather geeks, are even looking at the discussion yesterday, and you, you would probably know they did at least consider that, but they really seem not to be doing it at this point. Um, but um, here it says the threat of a higher end event is probably depending on what happens tonight. And as mentioned above, that remains uncertain. Either way, locally significant flash flooding could still evolve. And yeah, that's all true, in fact. And we'll see that in the models in just a short moment here. In fact, we're going to go to that rainfall amounts for the next two days. Um, so here are all the various scenarios. Um, the NAM 3K model has up to 10 inches near the Illinois-Wisconsin border. And so really the localized significant flashing threat really kind of depends 
but uh, models have a great I good idea. It's generally somewhere in the southern Wisconsin, northeast Iowa, for northern Illinois region, even a little bit in the southeast Minnesota. Um, for any of you thinking that NAM and NAM three camera are really kind of the same, not really. Um, so NAM has more across southern Wisconsin, but also a really another uh, across northeastern Indiana. Um, some of the convective models kind of all over the place with this, in fact. But the H triple R, um, not as much concerning, but still flash flooding would be possible. Mainly focus across um, far northern Illinois and Indiana Michigan border. Also across far southern Minnesota. Um, of course, these don't go as in depth, so. They're not as significant as they would probably look if they were actual models, or at least shorter term models, as I would say. We even more like convective model in general. But some Wisconsin would be really hit. Um, not really see much of that training based on that. But um, the Canadian model also has the bigger picture focused on some Wisconsin. Um, the branch of the Canadian model really has it more of a, like Michigan, maybe even southeast Wisconsin. But taking a little glance at the UK model, it's suggesting some Wisconsin is also the main focus here. So it's really favoring more in southern Wisconsin than other areas at this moment here. At least with the more significant flash flooding threat and therefore the heaviest rainfall amounts. And were the best significant potential for um, this training of storms, which would therefore lead to the major flooding events. So now we're going to be looking at um, some of the other weather concerns that include heat wave and possible tropical activity in the Atlantic heat in the next few days. Um, so tomorrow it will be more focused across southern plains as the cold front is moving through across central portion of the country. We'll also see that heat build across the east coast pretty much the entirety of it as well, except maybe across Maine at the moment, at least. Um, but this heat really comes back across plains, even some of the Pacific Northwest and Southwest will also be dealing with some of this triple digit heat as well. Uh, we could see some that nearing 100 degrees well across the East Coast on Tuesday. And then the heat still continues on to Wednesday. It's again the plains and the east coast, but it's time it's more than focused on the southeast coast as it cools down a little bit across the northeast. We'll continue to see this heat as well in the Pacific Northwest, um, so don't forget that. Um, but we could see really some that worse of the heat, but um, of course there's still time to really adjust on this um, across the central plains, um, including Nebraska, South Dakota where this model of GFS is nearing 110 degrees there for at least the highs. Um, we'll have the same thing for Thursday. Um, also across the plains, but our front is starting to move through, really pushing back on the heat, heat for at least some of the mid-Atlantic northeast coasts. Um, but we'll continue to see that into the rest of the week as well, including Friday across the plains again. And we'll continue to see that for a Saturday and even the Sunday. But my, some of you could even um, get to 110 degrees in some of the central and southern plains. And yeah, we'll continue to see that um, pretty much the most of the month, too. Because this is basically the, the pattern, unfortunately. And really, this has been an interesting month for heat overall. Really, I'm talking about the whole year. Um, there's been a lot of heat in this region, and really, it's not really coming down anytime soon, it looks like. Um, so looking at the tropical disturbance that is moving just off the shore of Africa, um, we do see there's a disturbance that's going to emerge across the eastern Atlantic, most likely um, in the next few days. Let's so look at the discussion here. Um, it does appear we'll see some gradual development in the system. And it will, um, of course, move westward, and we could have a tropical depression even potentially. And this is signs of Atlantic waking back up and having.
having this seemingly long slumber, but um, really this is actually kind of normal because normally we do have dust coming off Africa June, July across the Atlantic, and we've really been having that as well. And it's in the chair, it's also starting to come down. And we'll also look at this in the models um, to see um, where it potentially could go if it does happen to form by any chance. Like for a little while, we could see some that start to develop as it um, moves further offshore into next week. It will likely become a tropical storm based on these models. It could even um, weaken possibly despite as it heads further west towards um, the U.S. And I'm not really sure if it's impacts at this time because models really aren't showing much of that. But we'll continue to monitor the models in the next few days um, to see what um, this shows for the storm, whether or not it will make any impacts um, towards or even near the U.S. to begin with. Uh, West Alaskan model, Atlantic models, see how far it can go. It's really looking like it will actually dissipate as it heads further west um, of the Leeward Islands and also Puerto Rico and the rest of the Caribbean islands will likely pass north there, but we also look at other models, um, just to make sure we know what we're doing here and giving you the right forecast and everything. So we are looking at the Canadian model now, and what we're seeing here is um, it's not really showing much of anything, at least at the moment. And really, Canadian model doesn't show much potential for this really or anywhere. And this is as of the latest run available. The Euro model. The Euro model is also not showing so much. Likely it'll just be a tropical pressure, maybe even a weak tropical storm based on the current guidance here. But GFS is really showing potential to become a stronger tropical storm before eventually dissipating as it heads further to the west. So that's it for today, guys. Um, please consider subscribing if you do want to stay updated with the latest of forecasts and outsmart the upcoming storms. And that's about it, guys. Have a good day. Stay safe.